Okay, I'm making this quick video because I was just on this, um, like there's this, there's this photo that's circulating Facebook and it has to do with Bitcoin where they're comparing Bitcoin to the Confederacy currency and they're calling it racist. And the name of the photo or the uh, Facebook page that's propagating this is called, um, what is it, Against... Shoot, just a second here, I gotta look and see. It is called um, Americans Against the Libertarian Party, right? And um, I'm gonna link it down below for you guys to just read the commentary. And I've been pretty, you know, um, I've been pretty vocal in that. But um, one thing I, I do feel the need to clarify is the term fiat. Fiat means by decree. It does not necessarily imply that the currency is worthless. Because right now what we have is we have a monopoly currency and we're using a bank note, which is an interest-bearing debt or an IOU, as currency, right? So fiat, I mean, at one point gold and silver were fiat because they were by decree. But, I mean, that's just... You know, you got to get your language right when you're talking about these things. So it doesn't really matter. Um, like fiat, it could it could be it could be backed by something, or it could not be backed by something. But I think we pretty much can all agree that using a debt script as currency is a bad idea. Okay, um, I do have to agree with uh, Bill Still that um, that uh, the major issue here is is who controls the supply of money, and if you think that gold and silver is the answer to that, then I'm sorry you're wrong. And if you need proof of that, I would direct you towards um, Nikola Tesla's writings to Mark Twain and to. Um, Johnston and um, to um, J.P. Morgan himself, because J.P. Morgan, at the time he was developing and building Wardenclyffe down in Long Island, uh, one of the things that led to his demise was the fact that J.P. Morgan was contracting the supply of the money or the currency at the time, which... Um, it was being devalued, and not only that, the cost of copper like skyrocketed because Tesla needed a bunch of copper to build the Wardenclyffe. So, I mean, he wrote about this extensively in his correspondent correspondences with these um, other figures, and it's well documented in the book um, Tesla, A Man Out of Time by Margaret Cheney. So, I do need to point you in that direction. Now, as far as solutions go, I don't think um, that uh, like a greenback system by itself is going to be um, the one-all solution. And I don't, and I'm not necessarily for gold and silver uh, or um, the gold standard, which would include copper and nickel and, and your other um, your other uh, rare metals as or precious metals as an answer. What I think that there needs to be is I think there needs to be um, a series of checks and balances within the monetary system to um, decentralize the power as much as possible. So I think that Thomas Jefferson had it right by saying, hey, look, you know, um, we can have the federal government issue currency, okay, debt-free, and then peg the state so there's a safeguard and there is that, um, there is that uh, checks and balances within the monetary system between the state and the federal government because um, if you read, let me get a book here, what I'm working on here, I'm reading it essay by essay, I've been reading it to my kids, if you read the Federalist Papers, it's all about, um, one, it's about diplomacy for the reasons of trade between um, your nations, okay, your continents, and um, uh, maritime law, but um, it's also, too, 
about making sure that the power is decentralized and there is a separation of power. So I think with the monetary system, um, if you had a non-commodity backed currency, let people choose what money is because money and currency are not the same thing. Let people choose what they want their money to be. Money, of course, being a store of wealth and currency being the means by which you um, would exchange goods and services. So um, I think by having the debt-free um, currency or something like the greenback, or even if the greenback was uh, uh, pegged to, I believe Lincoln pegged it to what the states were able to produce, what I would suggest, and uh, Bill still had said this in passing or jokingly, you know, peg it to the population, I'd be all for that. Okay, because um, I'd have to agree with Anne um, Barnhart, Barnhart that we are the money. Okay, our labor, our production, we are the money. Peg it to the population. That would help control inflation at a federal level. And then, you know, you could keep um, in line with the Constitution and the states uh, keep them on a gold standard. Now, what we could do to decentralize this even further, okay, and get the gold in Fort Knox audited is to divide up the gold instead of having the gold centrally in one place, um, divided up again amongst the states, okay, and uh, decentralize the power further. Um, just an idea I'm working with and um, what we could do as far as indexing the state uh, currency, which would be backed by gold and silver, according, according to the Coinage Act of 1792. And um, there were two acts passed for um, for the ratio of gold to silver. The first one placed it at 15 to 1, and the second one placed it at 16 to 1. And I forget what year the acts were. Hell, I should probably just redo this video again. If I'm not... If I'm not... Um, I don't know if I don't do it over, but then I'm too lazy to do that. The fact that I even got up the nerve to even do this is, is kind of amazing within itself. I digress. So anyway, um, yeah, you should get a copy of this and read it, okay? Um, this will kind of give you an understanding about the, um, about the separation of powers. But anyway, we can index uh, the state currency and index the federal currency currency um, according to uh, the population and according to um, what the states are able to produce and according to um, what uh, the population in each state is. So I think that, uh, uh, that this would be a very doable thing and it would decentralize power and it would also give people an option. Now a key component of this would certainly have to be um, decriminalizing. And I don't like using legalization and I take that language to task because we are the people, we grant the government privileges. We grant the government power, okay? Once again, that's what this is all about. So, um, so the government that is of the people, meaning we own the government, we grant them power. And when you legalize something or you grant, start granting rights, then it gives the state all the power to run your life and to run everything. And we certainly don't want any of that. So decriminalization of competing currencies is certainly something that needs to um, be addressed. And we certainly don't want a Ponzi scheme, not like the fucking global one we have going now. But um, I do need to point you guys in the direction of, no, forget it, we'll just leave it at that.